The Florida Conservation and Technology Center, which is a partnership with the Florida Aquarium and the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, that's something that's been talked about for a long, long time. And it, the talks finally got serious about four or five years ago, and we're very excited about that. But Tampa Electric Company has always had a very strong environmental stewardship ethic. And um, the Manatee Viewing Center is probably one of our best examples of that ethic. That's 30 years old now, so this is something we've been doing for a long time. But wanted to expand that, expand our environmental education message. And we had all this land south of the Manatee Viewing Center because this property where the, the Florida Conservation Technology Center is gonna go is a little over 500 acres of prime coastal habitat. So it's just the perfect place to, to do a partnership like that. Where we're standing right now, we're on the top of a 50 foot high wildlife observation tower. And um, then there's a quarter mile boardwalk that leads up to this. And so visitors to the Manatee Viewing Center and then ultimately the Florida Conservation Technology Center will be able to come up to the top of the tower and see all the, the sites there are to see from up here as well as the other trails and other amenities that we're adding throughout the property. We see all kinds of birds. I'm up in the air, we regularly see bald eagles, vultures, hawks, ospreys, um, and then we see lots of wading birds throughout the mangrove and areas and other habitats. In the Newman Branch Creek, which is at the base of the tower over here to my right, we see uh, different fish. We also see stingrays and calanos rays, manatees, bull sharks. We see just about everything here. There's two things that we need electricity for here. One is we have um, security cameras. Um, the images are transmitted back to our central monitoring station and so we're able to keep an eye on this even when the facility is closed and no one is out here. But we also have a meteorological station on the roof and that also requires electricity. So we're gathering data about wind speed, wind direction, um, temperature, humidity. We're also measuring the solar incidence because we have some renewable energy projects going in and so we wanna be able to see just how much sunlight is falling in this area. And so both of those require electricity and it would have been very expensive to run a line all the way out here. So solar was a really good option for a remote facility like this. There is a paddling trail. When we're kayaking out here, manatees will regularly come right up to the edge of the kayaks and sometimes they'll actually nudge it. Or if they're surfacing for air, and they happen to be under the kayak, they'll actually come up under you and kind of knock you out of the way. So it's pretty exciting when, when you're out here and get to see manatees that close. In the background and to my left is our manatee viewing center and we've hosted our four and a half million visitor. And so it just gets more and more popular every year. During the winter time, it's wonderful habitat there and, and the warm water certainly attracts a lot of different species. If you're there, you can see um, spotted eagle rays jump out of the water, spinner sharks jumping up out of the water, um, all the species of fish, um, huge tarpon. Over here to the east, um, there's two projects. One is our Energy Technology Demonstration Center and that'll be just south of the Manatee Viewing Center. That's going to be an education facility that demonstrates several different technologies that are both renewable energy and distributive generation type projects. So people will be able to visit there and learn about wind turbines and solar and Stirling engines and bloom boxes and a lot of those other cutting edge technologies that are out there. There's also going to be lab space and there will be University of South Florida grad students there that will be doing research and collecting data on these different technologies. Where you see the large gypsum pile over there, there's going to be a 125 acre solar array. It's going to have 70,000 solar panels and that will be generating 25 megawatts of electricity and that should be enough to power about 3,500 homes. The boardwalk, it looks like it's actually just cut through a mangrove swamp and you might assume that there were a lot of impacts that occurred there to mangroves, but that's actually not the case. Um, this is right next to Newman Branch Creek and that creek was channelized decades ago. So they came in and dredged out sediments and also tried to straighten the creek and just um, cast the, the spoil to the side. And so alongside the creek, there was a band of spoil that had been cast from that dredging operation. And then on top of that was a lot of Brazilian peppers. So we came in and removed all the Brazilian peppers, flattened out the spoil area, and then put the boardwalk on top of that. 
So even though it goes right through a mangrove swamp, there was virtually no wetland impacts associated with the construction of that. It's about 12 feet wide, which is wider than you would typically see a boardwalk in an area like this but we were able to get permits to do it wider than what they typically permit because we needed to be concerned about public safety here. So if someone is out to the tower and has a medical episode of some kind, we can quickly get a golf cart out here and get help to them. Another interesting thing about the boardwalk is that it's almost all um, recycled plastic lumber. And of course, because it's in a very harsh en environment, all the screws had to be marine grade stainless steel screws. Each screw cost about 25 cents, and there's almost 80,000 screws on that boardwalk. So there's a lot of expense there just with the screws, but it was built to last. I mean, it's a, it's, I keep referring to it as a work of art. That and the tower itself, both just really beautifully constructed, and they will be here a long, long time.